fans are making a lot of noise at AT&T Stadium. Anything that moves between these lines, got to get dealt with. Ten, five, and he streaks in. Deep to the post to land. At the five, to the goal line. Dallas Cowboys game night is presented by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. Get into that in a second. Oh, here's a little trick racer. Brown back to God. Flea Flicker's got Laporta wide open. Sam Laporta foot race towards the end zone. Diving touchdown. Unreal. Over 490 yards, over 40. Seven points allowed and the Cowboys held out of the end zone in week six against the Detroit Lions 47 and I in the final score from AT&T Stadium. The Cowboys have lost four straight home games dating back to their wild card loss to the Green Bay Packers and it's their third straight home game where they've allowed at least 400 yards of total offense to their opponent. Welcome in to Cowboys game night everybody as we break down what just happened at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. I'll have Isaiah stand back Jordan join me shortly and we're going to go through the film of how this one unfolded but let's start with the highlights or the lowlights Dak Prescott entered the day 5 and 0 oh against the Detroit Lions but in the first quarter it was the Lions offense that had the first laugh down 3 nothing Jerry Goff looking right side to Tim Patrick might have been an and one no flag doesn't matter Patrick makes the grab for 42 yards and it sets up the Lions at the Dallas 23 two plays later David Montgomery throws some stiff arm breaks some tackles spins out of the arm tackle and into the end zone for six 16 yards out from Montgomery and Detroit was on the board with a seven to three advantage their newly re-signed tailback making it all worth the money early on Dallas back on offense and this time in the red zone Dak looking for CD lamb and this one intercepted by Brian Branch Dallas who had two red zone turnovers nearly three on offense last week against Pittsburgh has one early as Branch has the interception following a Lions field goal and a Cowboys three and out Detroit trying to keep their offense rolling they do just that with some trickery Goff to Amonra St. Brown back to Goff and he finds Sam Laporta the talented second year tight end out of Iowa and he takes it all the way to the house from 52 yards out longest play from scrimmage for Detroit in the first half and they kept the onslaught rolling now Dallas a little bit desperate with time winding down in the second quarter fourth and two they go for it it's incomplete on the intended target to Cavante Turpin short field for Detroit they would take advantage of that Montgomery plows his way ahead again his second touchdown of the day and he's in to lead it 27 to 6 at halftime on the opening drive of the third quarter it was all Lions all the time just like this game this is a pretty good microcosm of how it worked out Goff finds Jamison Williams to keep the onslaught rolling over 490 yards 40 points for the Detroit Lions as Jared Goff gets his first win over Dak Prescott as a Lion and Dak Prescott falls to five and one against Detroit as a franchise. It's also the first time Dan Campbell has defeated his former team after one loss with Miami and two losses with Detroit alongside Isaiah Stanback Emmy Award winning journalist and of course a Super Bowl champion. Isaiah, where do you start here on a game like this? Well, you have to go to the film. I mean, that's the first thing that you do. You have to be able to go acknowledge exactly what went wrong and then obviously find a way and get a game plan to correct it. But accountability has to be at the beginning of this thing. I mean, it has to be at the end as well. So offense, defense, where do you think the blame goes initially to get it started? I think you have to start with the defense. I think defense, obviously, if you can't stop teams from scoring, then you cannot even position yourself to go out there and have a shootout with a team. So um, both both sides of both of those uh, aspects of the game were not good tonight. Okay, Offense was terrible. Defense was even worse. Um, you have to find a way for both of them to be hitting at the same time, or at least one of them uh, take take the load. When, but you can't afford for, 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 for them both to be, be bad. How good was this Detroit team today? Oh, they're amazing. Uh, Detroit, we knew that they're a really good team. We knew they're, they're the most well-balanced team in the league. Um, and that's what they showed you tonight. Offensively, they were lights out. And defensively, that was the unexpected. Defensively, they shut Dallas down um, and forced five turnovers. That's something that I don't think anybody saw coming. Um, anytime you give a team five turnovers, they're probably going to beat you. And one of those turnovers was from Dak Prescott initially. How much blame goes on QB1 in a game like this? 
Yeah, I mean, Dak was under pressure all night long. I mean, there, there's going to be throws that he, wish he wishes he had back, um, but it's very difficult to do your job as a quarterback in the NFL when you're throwing the ball off your back leg the entire game. I can't tell you how many times he was scraping himself off the ground from getting hit, whether he was a sack or not. Um, but he found himself on, a, on the ground very often, and unfortunately the ball found itself on the ground as well. What do you say we break down one of those Dak turnovers mm. here in a moment? When we come back here on Cowboys game night, we take a look at that red zone turnover for Dak Prescott. He has four picks thrown in the last two games is it starting to become a problem right after this. This segment is brought to you by the Texas Lottery. Dallas Cowboys scratch tickets from the Texas Lottery are here. Play today. He get man coverage. He's a great target. They can get a first down here. They'll have to go for it. That's up, but they're going for it anyway. And it's intercepted. Ryan Branch has it, and this one's going to count. Well, it didn't turn out for the Cowboys on that occasion. Late in the first quarter, chance to drive and take the lead. It was a late down scenario where it looked like Dak Prescott forced things. But what actually went wrong on this play, Isaiah? And is it a problem that Dak has thrown these interceptions over the last few weeks? Four interceptions over, over, over two weeks, Kyle? Two weeks, yeah. That's definitely a problem. We need to take a look at it. I'm going to help you guys understand exactly what's taking place and what they are trying to get to. Because I know in Cowboys Nation, everybody's just like, turnovers are just unacceptable. And you're absolutely correct. But let me help you understand why they're taking place. The Dallas Cowboys run a West Coast offense, which means that they like to run this concept that we call a smash concept. Now, a smash concept can be ran from two guys or three guys, but typically there's a corner route, typically there's a hitch route, and if you run a third guy, you're usually going to have somebody going out to the flat, okay? But on this particular play, you're going to have Jalen Tolbert, who's going to step back on this play. You're also going to have good old C.D. Lamb run the corner route, and then you're going to have Jalen Brooks going to come in here. So again, you still have your three layers there, but the man that you need to pay attention to is the man that's lurking back here, and this is Brian Branch, the safety. As you guys see this thing play out, Let's go ahead and play it through. Okay, remember the concept, smash. You see Jalen Tolbert step back. Pause it right there. Jalen Tolbert is your outlet to the sideline right here. What else did I say was going to happen? You have CeeDee Lamb that's going to run a corner route, and you have somebody that's going to be coming in. What you're trying to do is high-low somebody in this area and get to the back of the end zone. Only problem is Brian Branch has seen this play before. So as he's coming out, pause it right here, he's taking care of his responsibility. He knows that he's not going to get the ball because he's not a threat to this yard marker. So he's not going to go there. Where do I know that he really wants to go? He wants to go to the back of this end zone. Who's the only man that can get there? Well, C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb is working his way to the corner. So why would I jump that when I can sit back and just wait for that ball to come to me? That's exactly what takes place on this play. Not only are these guys seeing the similar, similar concepts on film all the time, but now teams are starting to figure it out, and now they're starting to say, guess what? I'm not only am I going to take care of my responsibilities, but I'm also going to sit back and help my guys, and in the process, I'll probably get a turnover. So my question to you is, with that being third down and short, you're going to the sticks. There was a yard marker just a couple yards away. Why not check it down to Jalen Tolbert in that scenario? Like you said, Brian Branch knew he was going to go to the end zone and backed up in order to do so. Why not check it down and have a chance at Tolbert getting to the sticks as opposed to throwing it into coverage? Because by checking it down, you have to have full confidence that Jalen Tolbert can beat his guy one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. Right, meaning that he has to get that yak yardage. If I'm going to throw the ball to you behind the yard markers, right, before the sticks, right, then I have to have a full ball of confidence that you can make a man miss one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know if that's something that Dak has in terms of that confidence in Jalen Tolbert. That's not the guy that I would say would be the most shiftiest guy in the world or the most physical receiver like an A.J. Brown from Philadelphia yeah. or any of these other bigger receivers that's just going to stiff arm somebody like a Derrick Henry, right? <laughs> like Those are the type of guys that you would typically get the ball to short of the yard market because yeah. you have full confidence that they're going to get that extra full, extra, extra couple yards to get, get across the line. I guess in my head, I want to live to fight another play. I hear you. I, I get trying to go to your end zone, trying to get it to C.D. Lamb. It wasn't a perfect throw either. If he puts it on the back pylon, maybe it's a catch. Well, we saw we saw it last week against Pittsburgh as well. Very Got similar, it right there to it. Very similar, right? Yeah. Very similar concept where C.D.'s running to the corner of the end zone, right? And somebody who's responsible for a, a shorter route falls back, yeah. right? It's the same exact thing happens. He was responsible for somebody short of the yard marker, but he knows that Dak wants to take the shot over the top. He sits back, gets an interception. That's in the Pittsburgh game. We see it show right back up again today against yeah. Detroit. One of the weird spots in this game that didn't go well for the Cowboys. A lot didn't go well on Jerry Jones' birthday. When we come back, we're going to see, did this affect Jerry's birthday? And it was the biggest home loss since he bought the team. Let's hear from the owner when we come back. 
This segment was brought to you by the Texas Lottery. Dallas Cowboys scratch tickets from the Texas Lottery are here. Play today. Darrow style. I love that coaching from Aaron Glenn. Here's Goff going for the red zone. Amin Ross St. Brown. Touchdown. Largest point differential in a Cowboys loss at home since Jerry Jones bought the team in 1989. It was not pretty for the Cowboys in their fourth straight loss inside the walls at AT&T Stadium. As you take a look at the defensive stats, that was the last touchdown of the day. Amonra St. Brown from Jared Goff making it 47 points on the board. Kyle Yeoman's back with you here for Cowboys game night. Let's go out to AT&T Stadium and hear from Cowboys owner Jerry Jones. Versus well, really well, you know, uh, uh, just happened this week. I was uh, visiting with Roger Penske, and he was telling me, he said, it's a shame you can't win every race, but as you know, you don't win but a fraction of them to get to be involved. Uh, if um, you really can't take the heat, if you can't take the bad, uh, you're in the wrong business here. And uh, this isn't the world's smallest violin at all. Uh, I've had uh, some of the most wonderful moments, fleeting as they may be relative to all of negative moments. Uh, but those serve you well. But uh, I, I do some of the best stuff I do, I think, when uh, uh, I'm uh, uh, on my butt. To, to back up this point, how can you close in that gap of 38 points before you get to another matchup with an NFC contender? Well, uh, uh, the how part of it is uh, uh, something that um, the whole NFL would like to know in terms of not how we do it, but how everybody does it. There won't be but one champion this year, and everybody will wonder how they did it. And uh, a lot of times uh, that's, that's happening as they go through the season and uh, their story of how they'll win that thing, the final team. So uh, there's nobody got a blueprint, and we're going to do it this way before the season starts. That's not realistic. With uh, Bland and Parsons, do you expect them to have them back after the bye week? Uh, I don't know uh, about any of the status of our players that weren't out here today. Uh, I do know that uh, um, um, they, uh, uh, in their own way, they're a part of this, okay, because uh, for whatever the reason, uh, uh, we weren't able to go out here and play the kind of game that uh, uh, Detroit played with uh, 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 with the team that was out there. Uh, I'm sure those players that weren't out here today will take uh, a lot of the uh, being a part of this team, having each other's back. Uh, they'll take a part of this. There's no question in my mind about it. That we all you can catch all of Jerry Jones on DallasCowboys.com and the Cowboys YouTube channel. Isaiah, he hit a lot of the key points there. Your thoughts on what the owner had to say? Well, I love the, the, the world's smallest violin uh, thing that he brought up there. The reality is, you know, he's taking accountability. He's pretty much saying, like, don't feel sorry for me. Don't feel sorry for this team. You know, adversity is going to be there. Um, you have to find a way to overcome it, and it takes everybody to be a part of this. So ownership um, and accountability, I love hearing that from, from Mr. Jones. And the coaching staff as well. There were some interesting decisions in the middle of this loss to Detroit and when we come back we're going to break down one of them fourth and two you go for it was it the right call to go for it was it the right play call to try and execute to watch more Dallas Cowboys content on your connected TV download the Cowboys now app on Amazon Fire Roku and Apple TV Closed captioning is brought to you by the Texas Lottery. Cowboys scratch tickets from the Texas Lottery are here. Play today. Another blitz. Prescott can't find it. And it comes underneath. Backed away. Terry on Arnold had the coverage of Devontae Turpin. Lions take over in Dallas territory. So by this time in the game, there was a little bit of desperation from the Cowboys. Defense wasn't having any success slowing down the Lions offense. And the offense certainly wasn't blocking long enough for Dak Prescott to have success. But Isaiah Stanback, was it the right call to go for it on fourth and two? And was it the right play call as we break down the film? Was it the right call? Yes. And okay. was it the right play call? Oh, I'm going to have to say no. <laughs> uh, you guys remember just a little while ago, like I was talking about the smash concept, okay? Yeah. And the smash concept, you know, you have to, you have to understand that um, – 
you have to understand that in the smash concept, if things don't go your way, then you have to find a way to get the ball to your guys, right? Your playmakers, okay? So on this particular play, you guys are going to see at the bottom of your screen. Let me help you out here a little bit. Appreciate Let me it. help you out here. So you go here, and then you go here. There we there go. You go. Boom, there we go. Now go. we're good. Sorry about that. So on this particular play, we talk about the smash, right? On the corner route, you have a corner right here that's taking it up there, and you're always, always going to have some kind of underneath, whether it's going to be a hitch, whether it's going to be a flat, or on this particular play, whether it's going to be a whip route. Okay, on a whip route, you go out and you come back in. Either way, you need a short route and you need a deep route. Okay, on this particular play, is man to man coverage. So, this is exactly what the doctor ordered. You're looking at CD Lamb. If CD Lamb goes inside on this guy, it's probably not the route you want to run because now it's going to take too long for him to get back out there. So, your eyes go to right now, go to Camonte Turpin. On this play, he's going to run what we call a whip route. On a whip route, he's going up, and he's going to come out like he's running to the sideline with the hopes that this man is going to jump over the top of this thing, try to beat him to the sideline, and then Kevante Turpin can whip this thing back underneath, and then he'll have all this space on the inside to run. On this particular play, that's where Dak's going. Dak understands that it's man-to-man -man coverage. He understands that both of these guys are the guys he's looking for, CD and Turp. Boom, pause it right there. We just talked about CD. If CD goes inside, you guys see him right now. He's getting caught up. That's not the man you want to be looking at right now because it's going to take too much energy and too much work to get back outside. So your eyes automatically go to Kevontae Turpin. He has to beat his man out here. He has to sail the flat. If he sells the flat, then his guy is going to have all eyes on attention there, and then he's going to be able to come back underneath, and you guys see the space that he's going to have allotted here, but he never fully commits to the route. You see, as soon as he plants his foot, he is no longer committing to that sideline. This guy now knows, ah ha ah, you're not going to the sideline, you're coming back in here. And because I know you're coming back in here, I can put my foot in the ground, come back and deflect the ball. Boom, some people are gonna say it's pass interference, I'm gonna say it's a bang bang play. It's something that Devontae Turpin has to do a better job of in terms of his route, uh, his route running. Dak went to the right place, the coverage was the right coverage, the ball was on the point, Kamasi Turpin has to win on his route, and if he doesn't do so, it's a dead play. Unfortunately, it was fourth and two. You got to turn it over on downs. Yeah, that's the big thing is you went for it. You didn't get it, and by that point, it was almost chalk it up, game. That's it, yeah. done. And, and that's the unfortunate side. There was desperation, and you have to have a feel for it as a head coach. I think I would have gone for it, too. I think I would have also gone at fourth and two, but it also shows, hey, we don't really trust our defense in this situation, yeah. and it's something that we have to get in this occasion. Nicely done, Isaiah Stanback breaking it down. When we come back, though, Isaiah Stanback's going to give you an uncut version of Isaiah Stanback's learning le or losing lessons. Well, it's the first time we've done this. Losing lessons from Isaiah Stanback right after this. Dallas Cowboys game night was presented by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. 47 to 9, the final score. The Lions hand a revenge regulated loss to the Dallas Cowboys in week six of the NFL season. Still a long way to go. The Cowboys at three and three, entering the bye week back alongside Isaiah Stanback. I'm Kyle Yeomans. All right, Isaiah, if there's winners, you get Isaiah's dogs. Mm. If you got losers, you've got a losing lesson. This is a losing lesson for the Cowboys. What's your one lesson they have to learn going into the bye week? Bring it in. Bring it in here. Listen up. We're going to have a little nice little conversation. Dallas Cowboys, you guys are in a position right now where you have to be able to look yourself in the mirror, just like I'm looking at you right now on this screen. And you have to be able to acknowledge that you're not where you want to be. It's a bye week, okay? That doesn't mean that you get extra days off. No, 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 no. You're not in a position to do that. You go back. You watch the film. You take accountability for where you're lacking, and you get better. Find a way to get with your teammates, get that camaraderie, build that chemistry, and figure out how I can do my job better on the field. Coaches, the Coach Zimmer, figure it out. This defense has no identity right now. We're all over the place. You're giving up yards left and right. 450 plus yards for your three losses is not acceptable. Coach McCarthy, get in your bag. Your, defense, your offense is getting too simplified. They know exactly what you're doing. They're jumping your routes. Get creative. Get in your bag. It's not Christmas time yet, but I need the gifts to come out right about now. Oh, that's all good stuff. I'm just here taking notes. We'll see you in two weeks. Cowboys game night versus the San Francisco 49ers for Isaiah Stanback of Kyle Yeomans.